Let's be seated. May God indeed be glorified through your lives and through our lives all in Jesus' name. Amen. I have uh, the program here, which is actually slightly different with the ones you have in your hands. And so some of the things we're going to be having, I don't know if the local uh, planning committee have a group that can be singing for us. Do we have? Okay, pardon? Okay, teachers. So in the course of the program, we will also be collecting offerings. So we will have them uh, also sing for us during that time uh, of offering. And um, if the group of teachers also have a special number they will want to also render to us, we will give a time for them to actually also do that. But uh, before I call them to come for their special number, uh, we will give while we are on, some of our fathers in the Lord actually came, back, came in, and so we would uh, want them to greet us while we uh, introduce them. So as we take this introduction and greetings from our fathers, uh, I would like those teachers who will be giving us those songs to actually come and take their place so that they can begin to get prepared as that is done we will go straight into taking our, uh, you know, offerings. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so, like I said, while the program was on, our fathers walked in. And so, uh, here on the podium, like we've had, we have our father, the chairman of Garki DCC, who gave us the devotion. And our father, the secretary of the DCC, is here. You are welcome so much, sir. Yes, our father, the secretary of the DCC, is also here, and we've also seen our father, the host uh, pastor. Uh, we are very much grateful having you in our midst. You know, uh, from the Equa Christian Education Department, we have our father, Reverend Dr. Dan Luke, who is the coordinator of Equa Youth Ministries. And I would like to invite him to come forward as he introduces our father. Uh, the Equa Assistant General Secretary, uh, while he brings his greetings. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. I wanted to know if you are actually children teachers or not, or whether you are just uh, uh, some people where they carry from Park Park. Mm, amen. Thank you for coming. I know that there are people from distances. Uh, the Port Harcourt people came. I saw the CEO. I was just amazed. And I'm sure that if we have Port Harcourt, we will likely have Lagos. I don't know. I'm not going to introduce you people. But the time will come when that will be done. We are blessed and privileged today to have in our midst and as the main resource person for this conference, our father and friend and uncle and mentor, for those of you who have been in children's ministry for some time, if it wasn't yesterday that you came in, you would have definitely met this person, a wonderful person, who is responsible for, in a way, when we speak humanly now, responsible for the modern Equa Children Ministry as it is today. It's a very, very big privilege to have him to be acting assistant general secretary of Equa in the person of Reverend Ishaku Yaro. Please put your hand together for him. Relate. And um, he's really, really a friend. I'm not saying this just for anything. He's been my boss. He's still my boss. And we are going to be definitely built during our time here. When the coordinator of Equa Children Ministry informed me that they were contemplating inviting Reverend Ishaku Yaro as the resource person for this conference, 
my mind, I say that is the right choice. Right choice, not for anything, but for the fact that this is somebody who understands this ministry very well. And this is somebody who does this ministry not because of anything, not because of what you get out of it. You know, say, I guess some people, they, they say they do ministry out of which they go get, but I don't know. No. They get who they serve God because of food, though. Even Jesus talk him. He said, get people where they follow up because of bread. Yeah. So, but this are where they my back, so no be waiting carry and come with that. Amen. Amen. So, let me, let me take this time. Let me take this time to invite Reverend Shaku Aro, the acting FR Assistant General Secretary, to please bring the message here. So I understand that there will be offering first. Offering time. Now, I know there's someone that they tell children. Uh, and any child will not bring money, you will not go begin with them. Say, your papa, your papa give you money, you know, give. Uh, if I don't talk like that, I will not go begin argue now. Amen. Two. So it's offering time. Two. Yeah, so we will have the offering baskets, you know, kept in front. So we'll sing along with them as we come out to drop our offerings and then return back to our seats. After that, we will take uh, the message from our father. One, two, one, two. One, two. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we be on our feet as we praise God together? I saw believe in God, or oh, even the devil knows. Say not true. Oh. I saw believe in God, or oh, everybody knows. Say now you dare in. I saw believe in God, oh, everybody knows. Say not true, oh. I saw believe in God, oh, everybody knows. Say now you dare in. I saw believe in God, oh. Happy in the house of the Lord. 
Jesus' morning. If you know you are happy and you are so you are happy, come on, somebody, give the Lord a dance. 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 To the right, to the left, to the right, to the left. Hallelujah. Children teachers, though. So, if you don't have a vibrant children's choir in school, God will ask you a question now. Hallelujah. Uh, one of our sisters, Dorothy Yashin from Mango Kili. This is Yashin from Mango Kili. Your attention is needed, please, outside. Thank you so much. We will. Invite our father, the secretary of the district, to come and bring his greetings. Then he will pray for the offering and then usher in our guest speaker. Let's put our hands together, please, as our father comes to speak. Hallelujah. Good morning to everyone. Hope you slept well. So, the bed we use cannot be quantified with the one we have been using at home. Ama masunya magana senti one day agarikida. It's just between yesterday, today, tomorrow, we will be done. And we will all go back to our comfort zone. The Equa Acting Assistant General Secretary in person of Reverend Ishaku Yaro. Uh, he has been my yoga since he was the coordinator of children ministry. We work under him 
and he was promoted to the director. Still, we work under him as the Christian education organizer of the GCC. Now, as the acting assistant general secretary, the work on sir. Then, one young man who always decorates himself with a white tissues. I also welcome him, the coordinator of children, uh, youth ministry in person of Reverend Dr. Dan Luke. When someone does, when he, when he, when he certificate, so now some say, but when the certificate now so, say Akira so Reverend say Akarishi Ache PhD. When the local chima basa so so sashi, when the basa so Akira so deshi. Ama mu yamba yewe dawa muzi demi saba seka gamfara Reverend Doctor the welcome sir. We want to thank God for the journey masses granted to us, especially those who came in late yesterday after the first section. I said something yesterday here, repeating what some have said, that to whom much is given, much is required from him. We should not belittle these young ones we are working with. Some are even sharper than we do. The Lord has given us a great ministry these young ones, they are the future. And the strength and the glory of God's church tomorrow. So the way we bring them up determines the church of God that we have in future. So ask God for that grace that you will bring up these children in the right way. As we do that, the Lord will continue to bless us. We should not do it expecting an instant reward. One man shared a testimony that while he teaches at the Sunday school teacher as an uncle. The man grew old. And one day, as he was resting in his house, he heard a call. And the young man said, Grandpa, don't bother yourself to try to know who is speaking because you have many children. I'm one of them. I just want you to send your account number to me. So this man thought maybe these 419 people. The man sent his account detail to this number that called him. In some minutes, he received a lot. Guess how much? It was 200,000 that was sent to this man. And what the, man, the young man said, what I am today is because of what you made of me some years ago. The Lord bless us as we take this as a ministry in Jesus' name. Shall we pray for the offering?
Father, Lord, we are grateful for granting us another day to live. Thank you for allowing us to behold the light of this day, not because we want it, but because of your love and grace upon our lives. We thank you for the journey masses granted to us yesterday. We travel from far and near to this place purposely because we want to come and have a fellowship with you. That in this fellowship, we will learn under you. Father, thank you for granting us journey masses. Those who came yesterday and those who came in this morning and even those that are still on their way coming, we pray that, Lord, you grant them safety as they travel from their places to this place in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the devotion hour that you spoke to us through your servant. Thank you, blessed Father, for the moment of worshiping you with our substances. Father, we pray that all hands that has given in return, you will increase our blessings in the name of Jesus. As we continue with the next item, we are your servant will come up with a message, with a word, blessed Redeemer. We pray that, Lord, you speak through him to us in a language that we will all hear you and understand you and also give us the grace to be doers of your word. We commit unto you the rest of the activities for the day. As you have started with us, you lead us to the end of today's program. Take all the glory, take all the honor, and take all the adoration. This is what we pray for in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Now, I will invite our father, the Equa Assistant General Secretary in person of Reverend Ishaku Yaro to come. Thank you. The chairman of Gariki DCC, who is my governor, will not understand what I mean by my governor. He attended a course with him together with my brother, Reverend Dr. Dan. The Equa Leadership Institute. So he was our governor then. So I still call him my governor up to this day. So who doubles to be the chairman of Gada Zone? Chairman Khan, North Central, I just call him North Central. So we really appreciate God for you and for your life, for what God is doing. I always pray for him. I see him moving, he always moves doing one thing or the other in this ministry. I really appreciate God for you. And he has been helping us here in Abuja. Whenever we come here for anything, he is always there. He is always there for us. Always to assist, to support, to connect. In fact, we really appreciate you, sir. Yeah, we really appreciate you. You can know the quantum of what he is doing within Abuja here. He really is really helping us in whatever program we are going to do here. So we thank God for you. God, give God the glory. Our brother, the secretary, Reverend John Brian, whom we work together in the Christian education for long. <laughs> I was telling the chairman, I said, you really work in Christian education while you are the CEO. And he was telling me the story of how you have been in the ministry. So you really helped. You really worked. 
And even the person that succeeded to you, Iko, I think you have given him part of your spirit. Yeah, he is even doing well today. So we really appreciate you for that. Thank you so much. My brother, Reverend Yashim, <laughs> who is the resident pastor of this church. There is nobody in Equa that can come here and say, Equa has not done something here. How many of you have been here for, before now? How many of you? Very few. How many of you that this is the first time of being here? First time. So, Equa, what is your number? Uh, to my friends. And Equa will continue to work. Thank you so much, our brother. Thank you. Thank you. May God bless you with the support of uh, the DCC and all the levels of Equa. We really appreciate God for what you have done here. You can come here and do your program comfortably. Comfortably, without any wahala, without any trouble. So we can go. My brother, Reverend Dr. Dan, you can, I came to me, we are together. Well, we we'll continue to be together. So, <laughs> we are in the ministry for long with him in Christian education. So we thank God. My brother, La, you're welcome, sir. So thank you for your ministry to children. He is doing a lot in the children's ministry. So really, really appreciate God for your life and for you. Where is the coordinator? I didn't see him. Maybe he's doing something somewhere. And I have some people that I want to introduce this morning. Those that we work together in this children's ministry since that 2006. When we are, we are, as we are moving, we are, identify, we are identifying people. Different DCCs, different places. Please, can you all stand? Those of you that were coordinators before, or even now, can you stand? Those of you, all of you that are coordinators, before or now, please, can you stand? So I can cite you. Few of you are here today. Okay. This is Mama. How are you? So, well, Mama. We really worked with these people you are seeing. There are some from other DCCs that didn't attend this program. Let me assure you, we really worked in Equa Children Ministry. We faced so many challenges. Sometimes we are discouraged. And we will come and encourage ourselves to continue with the work. We know where we have, uh, we have started. You know, before now, Equa is just scattered. All our children workers are scattered. Some are claiming they are, the, they are for Paul. Some are claiming they are for Apollos. Some are claiming they are for Jesus Christ. So that is how we were before. So we said, no matter who you are, we know that we are Equa, isn't it? And Equa is our church where we worship our God. No matter where you receive your training, let's come together and build a ministry in Equa. So that is a struggle we faced from the beginning. So thank you so much. That was a struggle we faced. And we thank God today because things are going, isn't it? This is our church. And it is God that established Equa. We are serving God in Equa. So we have to build what Equa is doing. That is why we brought ourselves together. And today, the ministry is growing. And I believe the ministry will continue to grow till the end of times. So may God continue to bless you as you walk for the progress of children ministry wherever you find yourself. So thank you. And I thank God for the opportunity given to me to be the guest speaker of this program. That is why I'm here today. So even if I'm not a guest speaker, I think I may come for the program because I am part of you. Children ministry is my home. So whenever I see my friends and whoever that we work together, you are my friends. This is home to me. So whether I'm, the, I'm acting AGS or I'm not acting AGS, I am part of you, isn't it? So we thank God for this opportunity given to us. We are given a topic today out of the team of Equa, and the team of Equa is the topic for this uh, program. It is a team of program. And we all know the theme of Equa, isn't it? The theme of, of Equa is for the vision is yet for what? For an appointed time. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. There are two questions out of his complaint, the Habakkuk complaints. He asked two questions. We are going to take one of the questions today. Read, read the book of Habakkuk. 
book is full of complaint. And out of his complaint, out of his cry, he asked two major questions and he asked God. So we are going to take the first question today. The first question today. The first question is found in verse 2 of Habakkuk chapter 1. Habakkuk 1 verse 2. So we are going to read verse 1 and 2 this morning. We are going to connect this verse with the contemporary issues we are facing today in our lives. Do we have, do we used to ask such a question the way Habakkuk asked God? What are the reasons if really we were asking this kind of question today that is making us to ask these questions? So the first question, as I said, is in Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 1 to 2, uh, chapter 1 verse 1 to 2. Okay, let me read the oracle that Habakkuk, the prophet, received. Followed by the question, how long, O oh Lord? How long, O oh Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen? Oh, cry out to you, violence, but you do not save. But you do not save. Let me read it in Hausa. Jawab in the Annebi Habaku Yahoo Takena Ya Ubangiji in a Taku can name and Temoko Ama Kaiji Say Yoshi Zakaji Say Yoshi. How long, O Lord? How long? Say Yoshi. In a Kuka Agareka Sabo de Zalunchi Ama Bakai Temokova. How long? How long, O oh Lord? We are taking this question today out of the theme. How long, O oh Lord? For the vision is yet for an appointed time. How long, O oh Lord? For the vision is yet for an appointed time. How long? We are faced with so many things in this life. So many things. We can ask ourselves, maybe to share our experiences of this life. If you listen to somebody, then you look at your own experiences as nothing. Hearing somebody, your own will be the play child, child play, child play. Sometimes we are the cause of the things that are happening to us as in the case of Judah and Jerusalem. Judah and Jerusalem didn't walk in the way God wants them to walk. But sometimes God allows things to happen to us with the purpose of building our faith. It depends. The things you are facing in, our, in your life that you are asking questions about them the cause of the problem? Or is it God that is trying to test you? But for Judah and Jerusalem, they cause their problem themselves. And Prophet Habakkuk was seeing all the things that the inhabitants of this land were doing. The inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem were doing. And he was not happy. As a prophet, he has been telling them this, this, this. Don't do this. This is from doing this. They were not listening. That is why he asked God. He complained. How long, oh God? All these things will continue to happen. How long? He was worried. Looking at the sins of the land, he was worried. God said to him, he is going to punish them. He is going to punish them. How is he going to punish them? 
God said, I'm going to send Babylonians to come. I will discipline this nation. When Prophet Habakkuk heard that, that discipline his complaint again. Then he went into second question in verse 3. Why? 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 He was crying, complaining, asking how long all God this thing will continue. I am sure if you look at verse chapter 1, it is not the first time that God was telling the prophets that I'm going to send Babylonia. That is why he asked that question right away in verse 3. Why are you sending Babylonians to come and discipline these people again? Because Babylonians are more wicked than the people of Judah and Jerusalem. How can you send more wicked nation to come and discipline those who are less in wickedness? Why? He turned another question, isn't it? So these are the two questions. He first said, how long this thing will continue God? I've been seeing all these things that are happening. How long it will continue to happen? Then when God revealed to him that this is what I'm going to do to the land, then he said, why? Why? You should have sent people who are more righteous, a nation who is more righteous than the Babylonians. If you, look, if you read the history of Babylon, you will see the power of Babylon. What Babylon has become during their time. Babylon has become a great nation then. But today, where is Babylon? There is nothing like Babylon. Babylon. And that's a proud of Benjamin Netanyahu. When he presented his speech at the United Nations some years back, about eight years back or nine, he was asking, where was Babylon? Where was Rome? Where was Persia? These are the great nations that control the world. Before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, where were they? And he says, see, Israel is still standing up to this day. Israel suffered in the hands of these nations. But today, Israel is still standing. Where, is this nation? Where were these people? So Habakkuk complained for two things, major two things. Number one, there is no righteousness in the land of Judah and Jerusalem. No righteousness. People are unrighteous. People who are doing whatever they want to do. People who are worshipping the kind of gods they want to worship. People are exchanging the worship of God into the worship of idols. Man-made gods. That was his number one complaint. And that was his cry. The sin of the people. Then his second complaint. Is the righteous nation, the unrighteous nation, sorry, is coming to punish those who are more righteous than them. The unrighteous nation, the nation who are so proud of their gods. They are the one that God assigned to come and punish people who are more righteous than them. Following the complaint of Habakkuk, he cried and asked God the two major questions. He was crying, asking God of how long this sin will continue of the people of God. How long it will continue? When are you going to stop this violence that is happening? If you look what Habakkuk saw during his time and his contemporaries like Jeremiah, and others. They saw abomination happening in the land of Judah. Today, as a church, look at the church, you see abominations going in the church today. 
So many things going in the church today. So many things. And you cry like Habakkuk did. How long? How long, oh God? How long, oh God? Jeremiah, being the contemporary of Habakkuk, he explained the sin of the people of Judah and Jerusalem in Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 13. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 13 said, My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and have dug their own systems, broken systems, systems that cannot hold waters, systems that cannot hold waters. They have forsaken God, who is their source of waters. They have forsaken him. They turn to digging their own systems that cannot produce water. And that is what we are facing today in the church. Believers today are forsaken God. Even some of us teachers today are forsaken God. Believers are forsaking God. They are leaving the God who is the source of life. Who is our source of life. If parents can forsake God, what will be of their children? There are many homes today who don't have time for their children. Who don't have time for their families. But they only have times for their places of work or for their businesses. Many believers today. So if you take away children ministry in the church today, there are many children growing in our churches that will not know anything or learn anything about God because their parents are not there for them. They are not there for them. They are concerned about our physical life. Physical life. What can we get? What can we do for this physical life? Not the spiritual. That is what happened to Judah. As teachers, What is, as a teacher in the church, as a teacher, children teacher, what is your cry today? What is your cry? What is your complaint? Do we have complaints? As teachers, do we have complaints? Do we have complaints? Yes, we do. We do have so many complaints. Let me tell you one of the complaints. Some of our churches don't even buy some school materials for us. Two of us. Oh. And I know it's one of the major complaints of some of our teachers. Then, can you ask that the same question as Habakkuk asked? How long? How long that will continue? How long that will change? Will you continue to buy some of the school materials with your money? Or will your church come and be buying for you? How long will that complaint continue? It's one of the complaints. Sometimes on the school teachers, even coming to this conference, some of our churches didn't give us transport. Some of our churches didn't give us feeding. You come yourself with your money. Through or false. It's one of our complaints. How long that will continue to happen? How long can that change? How long? It's part of our complaints. And we will continue to complain. There are so many complaints that we do. 
many. So if you are going to use the same question, use the same question in your life as Habakkuk did. Then you need to be mindful of these two things. Have you ever cried and asked the Lord how long? Or why? Or why? Have you ever asked that question? What were your reasons? And what is happening to you? What is happening to you? What is happening to your family? What is happening in your church? What are the things happening in our nation, Nigeria? Because almost all of us here are Nigerians, isn't it? What is happening in our nation? What are our complaints? What are our cries every day? And how long can that continue to happen? When are we going to get change, changes on the things that are happening to us? Some of us, we have family problems. You are a teacher. You do come to teach children the word of God. Your family is not going as you wish. How long will that continue to happen? You are a teacher teaching children in the church. You have your own personal problem. Maybe spiritual problem. Maybe physical problem. How long can that continue to happen in your life? How long? Have you ever asked yourself, how long? What will you do to bring a change? If you have the power, because we have different complaints. We have different problems. We have different cry. And we are crying every day. What is your cry? Is it spiritual? Is it physical? Or what is your cry? How long will you continue in that cry that you cannot change? Because if it is spiritual, you have the power to change. It is you that can change your spiritual standard in life. If you decide to change whatever you are in today, you can change it. You can ask God to help you. And you bring a stop to whatever is happening to you. The only thing that you cannot change in a day is health challenge. If you have any health challenge, how long will that health challenge will continue to be in your life? Then you have to cry to God, how long, oh God? How long will this health challenge will stop in my life? You want to serve your God. But you are facing challenge health-wise. How long will that continue to happen? You have to ask God. God, I want to stop on this thing. And God has the power. He has the power. And at this appointed time, he will bring healing to your body. And he will heal you. Because he is the great healer. He will heal you. But push the question to God. God, how long? Will I continue to be in this situation? Thank God for my sister, Sister Helen. She had the same health challenge in her life. When I saw her yesterday, I was overwhelmed. I was happy. I said, you look healthy. She said, since January, maybe you have been asking God, how long can I continue in this situation? And you want to serve your God. But how long can you continue in that challenge? In that problem? You want to serve God, but you are hell. It's restricting you to do whatever you want to do for your God. Please ask God how long. Then wait and see. You want to stop, and God will stop it in your life. He will stop it. There is nothing that God cannot do.
suffering or pain, jealousy causes distress and painful emotions. When you are in distress, you will continue to cry because things will not go well with you. If someone or something distresses you, they will cause you to be upset completely, to be worried in whatever you are doing. And there are many causes of distress. Many causes of distress. Many causes of distress. Finances can distress you. Financial difficulties. You want to do something, but you don't have the money to do it. You want to travel, you don't have money to travel. You want to go for a program, no money to go for the program. It will distress you. It will distress you. If you are faced with financial challenge, how long can that continue to happen? How long? How long? How long? And what can you do? How can you do to remedy yourself from financial difficulty, financial challenge? You are waiting for your church. Your church will not give you what you want. How long can you continue in that? Will you ask God to open ways for you? So that whatever you are going to do, you have finances to do it. You want to serve your God, but you don't have the money. Financial challenge can distress you. And sometimes, if you are not careful, that can lead you to sin. It can lead you to sin. Except if you are careful. Extra careful. And wait on God. Ask God to help you. The environment can distress you. I don't know the environment you are coming from. But you know your environment. We do complaints of our environment. Sometimes we work, wait for government to come and do things for us. But the government are not forthcoming. Government is not coming. Maybe in your area, you are faced with river until you cross river before you go to your house. Who can help you with that? It can distress you. During rainy season, some people find it difficult to move. How long can you continue to be in that? And we, we all have the hierarchy of government. We have the councillors, we have the chairman, we have the governors, we have the whatever, whatever. They are there. Who will help you? Sometimes academic difficulties can distress us. Some of you, you have gone to school, you are in school. You are given four years. But you are not finished within that four years. Some of you, you are spent five years, six, seven years in school. Before you finish university, it can distress you. And all those things are happening in our country. How long can that continue to happen? How long? How long? As a teacher, some of us, we are not time managers. We don't manage time. As a teacher, you are given 8 o'clock to start your class. You don't come until 8.30. And you are the one teaching that day. It can distress your colleagues. Those that you are working together with them. It can distress them. And they will continue to ask how long you, this man will change. As we are throwing questions to God, we will continue to throw questions on ourselves. How long on ourselves, isn't it? How long would this, this person change from doing this thing that he is doing? 
instead of us to come together and manage what we are given to do or what God has given us to do in this ministry, some of us, we are dragging our legs. We are not trying to build a ministry as we expect. If you are full of anxiety, it will distress you. And you continue to ask questions, how long? Depression can distress you. Trauma can distress you. Name them. There are so many things that can distress you. So many things. How can you do as a teacher if you are faced with this kind of situation? How can you do as a teacher? As you continue to ask how long, how long, how long, how long, how long? When will it be over? When? Habakkuk asked, how long, oh God? How long? When God gave him the answer that this is what I'm going to do to the land, and he asked God, why? Why? Then the answer didn't come on time. That answer of why did not come on time. That is where we got our dream this year. When God said, the vision is yet to happen. It can happen during our time. Or it can happen after you. So the vision is yet for us. There are some problems that you can enter in your life. God will allow you to live in that problem. You continue to ask, you continue to ask, you continue to ask. And you will find the answer. And what can you do? So you wait, isn't it? You just have to wait. The way you want your church to do for children in your church, you are not getting it. How can you do? Can you continue to ask how long? When will that change? When? As a teacher, you have to continue to wait. Continue to wait as you ask how long. Continue to wait. Continue to wait. Then how can you wait on God? You have to console yourself with some biblical verses. The Bible offers a number of verses and principles that can help us find peace and calm ourselves in difficult situations. Whatever thing, whatever problem you are facing, please go back to the Bible and calm yourself there. God knows about your complaint. God knows about your problem. Better than you do. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 5 and 6 said, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths what? Straight. Wait on the Lord. Trust in him. Some of us, we don't even have Sunday school classes. Even this bar chart, we don't have it. How long can that continue to happen? During rainy season. No place to meet with the children. How long can you continue to wait for that? Trust in God. Trust in God. Trust in Him. He will do it. He will do it. Maybe God will bring another pastor one day who has concern for children and He will change your story. He will change your situ situation. And things will change for you. That is how our God does His work. But we human beings, Whenever we enter into any problem, any complaint, we want that thing to happen to us now, 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 now. 
want to know how God is dealing with us. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7 said clearly, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through Jesus Christ. Don't be anxious about anything. Any problem comes your way, please don't be anxious about it. Just pray. Pray to God. Pray to God. Don't focus on the past. If you want to help yourself in your distress, in your problem of asking how long, how long, how long, how long, how long, please don't focus on the past, but focus on the present. And ask God, what is happening to me? What happened yesterday has already what? Passed. Yesterday cannot come to today again. Focus on the present. That is what Jesus said clearly in Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Each day. Focus on the present. What is happening today? Ask God, God, what can we do today? How can you help us today to come out of the problem today? No matter what answer God has given you, please dwell on that. If he didn't give you any answer for your problem today, wait for an appointed time. Wait. Wait for an appointed time. Want to come out from all this kind of complaints and, and questions? Seek God's peace. Seek God, God's peace. John chapter 14, verse 27. Jesus said, Peace I live with you. My peace I what? I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not. of God is different from peace. The way the world is looking at peace is different than the peace of God. The way Christians look at peace is different. The world is looking at peace in material things. The world is looking at peace in moral things. The world is looking at the world is looking at peace in different ways. But the true peace in life comes from God. When you know God and you trust God, you depend on him, then you have total peace. Whether with material or without material things. True peace comes from God. Then it will reduce all your questions. Want to do away of your distress. Asking so many questions in your life, develop a grateful attitude. Grateful attitude. A grateful attitude. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18. Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Give thanks always. In every situation you find yourself, give thanks to God. Appreciate God. Appreciate God. Appreciate God. But sometimes our complaints are more than our gratitude. We do complaints often. You can appreciate it. Please teach us. Let's always appreciate God. 
Let's always thank God. In whatever situation we find ourselves. Do away with our complaints, our cry. We have to go off of our burdens. We have so many burdens in this life. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. There are two types of rest here. The spiritual rest and the physical rest. What burdens are you facing? Is it a burden of sin that you are facing in life? If you are faced with the burden of sin, Jesus has the power to free you, to save you from that kind of sin. He has the power to take away that sin from you if you come to him. If you come to him. Is it a physical need? God has the power to take away that from you. If you come to him. Anybody you are thinking of that is disturbing you in your life, please come to him. He has the power to do away with that thing. And if you want to do away with those complaints and the distress in your life, Joshua chapter 1, verse 8 said, Do not let this book of the Lord depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. So Christ is everything. Jesus is everything. Baku, there's all this kind of wahala in his life. There's all these kind of troubles in his life. But at the end, the only answer that God gave to him is wait. The vision is yet for an appointed time. Habakkuk wants that thing to happen now, 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 now. He wants God to stop all the sins of the people. God didn't do it. Even today, the things that are happening to us in this life, we want God to stop it. Some are not sleeping in their houses today. Because of the banditry that is going on everywhere. Because of the kidnapping that is going on everywhere. Because of the killing that is going on everywhere. Who can stop it? Don't you think that God has power to stop it? He has the power. But why is that happening? Remember what happened Christmas night in Plato? Around Bokos area, Mongwe area, Barikiladi area. People were killed. People were killed in Christmas Eve. They have slaughtered their animals. Women were cooking. Crying there, whatever. Behold, these people came. Started killing, 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 killing. How many villages? Countless. More than 20 villages were arrested in one day. In one night. People were killed. I don't know if we have some people from Plateau here. From the Plateau diseases. Do we have some here? People were killed. We went to all this, those places. We went to Bokos, we saw these people. We went to Barikeladi, we saw these people. We went to Mangu, we saw these people. In Bokos only, they have about 13 IDPs. In Bokos alone. One small girl of three years. The entire family was wiped away. She was the only one that was left. How God saved her, it's only him that knows. He just hides behind the curtain like this. Just three years. That small girl was traumatic. She was not taking taking anything. Thank God for the upper president. His family adopted that girl. She is now with them. Adopted her to be their daughter. Many things are happening. Many challenges. How long? 
can that thing continue to happen? You think God is not alive? God is alive. God is alive. Seeing all those things. All those things. But we have to wait for another prophetic time. Because the vision is yet for another prophetic time. Whatever is happening to whatever is happening to you, wait. Wait on God. Wait on God. God has an appointed time for that thing that is happening. The only thing that you can walk for it is if it has to do with your spiritual life. You are the one to stand and correct. But anything that has to do with this life, that you don't have the power to do anything on it, please wait for an appointed time. God has the power to do it at his appointed time. If you have complained in your church, you have been complaining, please stop complaining. I used to tell you teachers, stop complaining. Stop complaining. Just pray. Ask God, wait for an appointed time. Maybe it will not happen at this time. Maybe it will not happen during your present pastor. But maybe it will happen after your present pastor is found. Things will change. But stop complaining. Do what God asks you to do. The ministry that God has called you to do, do it diligently. Do it. If you have the money to do it with your money, do it. Because you know the value of what you are doing. And you continue to wait on your God. And surely he will do it for you. He will do it for you. He will do it for you. Those of you that are faced with health challenge, God is there for you. Or any sickness in your body. Remember, the Bible affirms a general connection between sickness and sin. That death, disease, and decay were not part of God's original design. What brought all those sins? Sin! Isn't it? No, it was sin. God created man from the beginning to live happily, to live joyfully, to live in spiritual standard with God. And God was fellowshipping with man. But sin broke everything. Today, we are faced with so many challenges of, our, of, our, of, of, of health. Different kind of challenges. And some of the challenges of our health is because of sin. Some God allows it to happen to us. Maybe it will build us up in the ministry where God has called us to be. God is with you in your sickness. How many of you are faced with so many sickness, with different kinds of I don't know how many. Please, can you stand? If you are faced with any kind of sickness, can you stand? Physical sickness first. Any physical sickness, can you stand? Physical challenge. You have been praying, you have been praying, you have been praying, you have been praying to God. Healing is not coming. Healing is not coming. How long can that continue? And you want to serve your God. You are willing to serve your God happily, joyfully, wholeheartedly, but one sickness or the other has held you back. How long can that continue to happen? The God you are serving knows where your problem is. From your head to your toe, God knows where your problem is. You're serving. He knows where your problem is. And he knows your problem. Please, can you ask God and tell God that God, this is what I am faced with. I don't know because you are many. You know the problem. Please tell God of that problem. Share to God that God, this is what I am facing. This is what I am facing. Can you come close here? Tell God about that problem. What is that problem? You know. You know. Come so that our brother will pray for you here. Come here so that our brother will pray from your health challenge. I don't know that health challenge. Me, I know my own. I know my own. What is that challenge that you are facing physically that is bothering you, is stopping you from doing what you're supposed to do? Sometimes you want to do some things, 
but the challenge will hold you back. You want to do something? You are even afraid of your life because you don't know what will happen. But God knows that. And he has the power. He has the power to heal you, to make you to be a better teacher that he wants you to be because your God is there. And you stop complaining how long, how long, how long. Please tell God. As you tell God today, watch, wait and see whether God will do something or he will not do something. Wait for an appointed time. His time is coming. The time of healing is coming. His time of healing you is coming. He can even heal you today. He can even heal you now. He has time for your healing. In the world, there is power, might in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is power, might in the God in heaven, there is power mighty in the blood of the Lamb. I am believing in my heart there is power in the name of Jesus Christ. Your word says the name of Jesus is a strong tower. The righteous ran into it and he is saved. These servants of yours, O oh God in heaven, have run under that name that is called Jesus Christ. And we are believing the Lord, you will touch them. You will heal them. The woman who was suffering from the issue of blood, she said, if only I can touch the hem of his garment, I know I will be healed. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Again, do you believe that? Lord, here we come to you now. We are not approaching a mere man. We are not kneeling before any other man. But we are kneeling before God in heaven. We are kneeling before the one who parted the Red Sea. We are kneeling before the one with his mighty hand that he delivered the children of Israel from the hand of a terrible king. Lord, this morning, we are kneeling before you. Please, Lord, we are kneeling before you. God, we are kneeling before you. I kneel on behalf of your servants today. I'm believing that every one of them, you will meet them at the point of their needs. I don't know the challenge they are going through, but we have heard you clearly from your servant. How long will this continue? Lord, we are believing there is an appointed time and that appointed time may be now. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Headed, stop in the name of Jesus Christ. Stomach, ache, stop in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever may be the challenge, Lord, I'm believing. Because you know the end from the beginning, I am believing that you will heal all these ones that are kneeling so that this ministry ahead of them will be better. So that the ministry in their hands will never die. Amen. So Lord, I ask, your word says healing is the bread of your own children. We claim that in the name of Jesus. Father, let your will be done. Father, let your will be done. 
thank you, Lord, because we believe it is well with us. It is well with our spirits. It is well with our soul. It is well with our bodies. Thank you, Lord. Your word says, I will do this. I will give you a testimony. So that that testimony will draw many to the saving knowledge of God. You will receive your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. It is well. It is well. It is well in the name of Jesus. It is well with my soul today. It is well. Oh, it is well. It is well. Jesus. It is well in the name of Jesus. It is well. With my soul today. God in heaven, I'm believing you that it is well with us. As we leave this place, just as you have commanded the woman who was caught in adultery, you said, go and sin no more. I pray that none of these ones will be a victim, a prey. In the hands of the devil. But I'm believing that today it is well. It is today it is well. Thank you Lord. I commit all of you in the hands of God. Who is able to make you. You know strong. Healthy. In order to serve him. In the name of the father. Amen. The son. Amen. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much. Receive your healing in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord will heal you. He will heal you. He will heal you. It is well in the name of Jesus. It is well in my soul today. Can we sing it all together? It is well. Oh, it is well. Baba. It is well in the name of Jesus. It is well with, with my soul today. One more time, my brethren. It, it is well. Oh, it is well. It is well in the name of Jesus. It is well with my soul today. Sing it louder, louder. If you believe it, sing it louder. Sing it from the bottom of your heart. It is well with our soul. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The last prayer we are going to do is we are going to pray. All of us are affected in this prayer because we are faced with spiritual challenges in different ways as teachers. Nobody can claim he has no spiritual challenge. Our challenges differ. Our, cha our challenges are in levels. What you are facing spiritually, that's not the thing I am facing. Maybe I am facing another thing different, spiritually. But all of us, no one can claim that we are clean before God. We are going to pray for ourselves to help us. Don't remain in that kind of thing that you are doing because God will continue to ask you how long can you remain clean. Now, it is God that will ask you. He called you as a servant. He calls you to serve you in his vineyard. He calls you as a teacher to teach God's word. But there is one sin or the other in your life. Or in my life. How long can I continue to remain in that sin? God is asking us now. How long? How long? Is it bitterness? Is it jealousy? Is it sexual immorality? What is that thing? 
What is that thing? God is asking you, how long? He has given you ample opportunity. How long can we live in that? Ask yourself. Ask yourself. What are you facing spiritually? What are you facing? Spiritually. God is asking us today. How long can we remain in that? Will I do away with it? And ask God to forgive me? So that he will continue to give me the ability to teach as he expects me to teach. Sometimes when we are teaching or preaching, we as pastors, when we reach a place that convince us, we don't talk much on that. Then we talk less on that thing because it affects me directly. How long can I continue to do that? That I will not ask God to forgive me. Today is your day, please. Today is your day. As a teacher. As a pastor. So that God will not continue to fix us spiritually. To ask us how long. How long. How long should we continue in that? How long? How long should we continue in that? All stand up. All of us, let's stand up, please. We ask God. As you pray in your heart, tell God that thing that you know. Me, I don't know. Some of us are slanderers. We slander our fellow workers. Some of us are cheaters. We do cheat. Even in the ministry, we do cheat. Some of us, even the offering that we used to collect for children offering, we used to remove something and pocket it in our pocket. Is it not sin? It's sin. And God is asking us today, how long can we continue in that? Please? How long? How long can I continue in that? Ask God to forgive you. Tell God that thing that you know you are doing. And God has given you the opportunity to be teacher, teacher of the Bible. Teacher of his word. found wanting then we have to ask him to forgive us Stand, we stand in your presence, our God and our Father, in acknowledgement of your word that says this is the message we have heard from him and declared to you, God is light, in him there is no darkness at all. If we claim we have fellowship with him, yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word has no place in our lives. Your word is true. Your word is amen. You have spoken. We have no excuse to give. All of us, as we stand, we stand in confession. 
we stand in agreement with you, our Lord, as your word says, that we have all sinned. And we have each gone our separate ways. We have derailed from the path that you have cleared for us. We have not done as we should have done. We have not spoken as we should have spoken. We have not acted as we should have acted. We have not looked as we should look. We have not done righteously as we should have done. And today, God, we come with no excuse. We come surrendering to your will. We come begging you for mercy. We come pleading for forgiveness. We come pleading, oh God, that from heaven, you look, look upon us with your eyes of mercy and you will avail grace unto every one of us. Because if you are to treat us as our sins deserve, we will all be condemned. None of us, none of us, from the greatest to the least, can boast of anything in your presence. Our God, we plead for mercy. Our Father, we beg for mercy. Our Father, we beg for mercy. <laughs> Have mercy. Have mercy. Oh God, please have mercy. We are happy because Jesus came, Jesus died, Jesus rose, Jesus is coming back to redeem us. Oh, what a privilege. We who are nothing. Has been made, have been made something. We who deserve to die have been given life. We who are condemned have been redeemed. We rejoice. We rejoice. Angels sought the privilege to serve you. You did not grant it unto them. We who are nothing have been given this privilege. Father, please take the glory. Take the honor. Break us, O God, today. Help us to see our nothingness. Help us to see our feebleness. Help us to see our state of sin. Help us to not come before you in boasting, not to take anything for granted. We know you will do this for us. Help us to hate sin as you hate sin. Help us to see sin the way you see sin. Help us to not compromise. Help us to stand in the place of righteousness. And Satan will address you by name. You have no right to come anymore. Thus far have you come. No further shall you go. Enough is enough. Be loose. All of us who are here in the name of Jesus. Go set free and serve the Lord. Thank you, Father. Every sin, every resemblance of sin, every machination of sin, every imagination of sin, Every inclination of our heart that tilts towards sin is broken today in the name of Jesus Christ. Grant us this freedom, our Father. Grant us this liberty in your presence. And have your way. Have your way. Help us to serve you. It is a great to serve the Lord, it is a great thing. To serve the Lord, it is a great thing. To serve the Lord, walking in the light of God. Oh, walk, walk. Let's sing a song of thanksgiving. 
Almighty Father, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus Almighty Father, Father thank, thank you. We have nothing to give you than to say thank you, Lord. Almighty Father, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Almighty Father. Turn your hands together for Jesus. Keep clapping, keep clapping. Almighty Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, Almighty Father, thank you. Amen. Amen. Shall we be seated? I want to appreciate our Father in the Lord for this message that has come pointedly, directly to each one of us. It's our prayer that that which God has said to do in our lives, he will perfect it in the name of Jesus. There is a song which is meant to be the theme song for this conference. It is a cry for the children. But as I listen to the message, I am feeling very strongly that before this conference will end, our brothers who have been and sisters who have been blessed with the gift of uh, singing would come up with a cry for the teacher himself. Hallelujah. Bro Martins, bro Sunday, and others, the Lord will show you what to do. But I feel very strongly that as we cry for the children, we need also to cry for ourselves. Amen. So we will take that song prayerfully together. Um, bro Shagai is supposed to come and lead us in this song. But he said he taught me the song, so why should he come and teach the song? So I should be the one to sing it. So I will try. How many of us know the song? Cry out for the children. How many of us know the song? Okay. I, I can see just a few hands. Let me take it. If I didn't take it well, someone will come and uh, help me. Hallelujah. Cry out for the children so tender and young who know not the right from the wrong. Cry out to the Lord with a prayer on your tongue for little ones far from the light. They wait in the byways of sin and despair. They know not the Savior. There is no one to care. They cry out till the gospel is brought to them there. Cry out. Cry out, cry out, cry out in the night. One, two, go. Cry out for the children so tender and young who know not the right from the wrong. Fine. Well, let me just take it, please. Go ahead. One, two. Just listen to the tone. Don't mind the voice and then. It's on page five. Out, down. Page five. Page five. Page five, please. The song is on page five. Page five. Okay. Cry out for the children so tender and young. Who know not the right from the wrong? Cry out to the Lord with a prayer on your tongue. For little ones far from the light. They wait in the byways of sin and despair. They know not the Savior. There's no one to care. Cry out till the gospel is brought to them here. Cry out, cry out, cry out, cry 
the song. I think we should sing it together. We should sing it together. Yes. So, one to go. Cry out in the children so tender and young who know I said, before this conference ends, we will raise a cry for the teacher that labors among the young ones in the name of Jesus. Bro Shagaya, please, you will come back. We will call our uncle, our father, Reverend Nuhu Shagaya, to come and direct us on how the Bible studies is going to be. Amen. So, we will go straight into the Bible studies, and our brother, our father, Reverend Nu Shagaya is going to tell us how that is going to take place. And we have the next one and a half hours to do that. By 12.30, we will all break in for the lunch break. Are we there? You look at your timetable. 12 break, lunch break, or break is 12.30 to 2 p.m. So, Bro Shagaya should. Good morning. Or is it afternoon? Okay. Um, this is how the Bible study grouping will be. I'm sorry we did not paste the numbers, but the numbers, I mean, the grouping is so natural. Now, this is how we are going to go. Before then, let's have all the facilitators please come forward here, please. All the facilitators should be here. Now, at this angle, the first two pillars, we have one class. That's group one. Then, this second pillar, this second row, we have group two and three. Now, they, you will back each other. Each group that is staying together, you will back each other. Group Two and three is in the second row. Then the third row here, we have group four, five, and six because it's deep. Four, five, and six. Then this row, we have group seven and eight. This other row, we have group eight, nine, and ten. Then this particular row here is group 10, 11, 12, and 13. We have two, three groups here, three groups here. I hope the facilitators are getting that. Then the last row, we have group 14 and 15. 14 and 15. Then up, we have each Pillar will take one group. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven groups in, uh, on top, making 21, 21, 22, sorry. Now let's see the first letters. We'll quickly give you numbers and you will make sure that, okay.
Okay. Very quickly, please can you come one by one as you come forward, I give you your number, you pass on. Okay, uh, the last four groups towards the side, that's 11, 12, 13, 